District of uh, Virginia. He has never been primary before. This is the first time. I've never run for office before uh, doing that, doing that for the first time. And But I'm part of, in the 6th District in, in Virginia and in this country, I am part of a, a movement, a much larger movement, which you are all a part of as well, which is a, a liberty and a pro-constitution liberty government movement. And uh, part of it is Ron Paul, a big part of it is Ron Paul, but it goes way beyond that. Um, people who consider themselves conservative, Republicans who read the Republican creed and think that that's what we should be doing. These people are emerging as the active majority in the party. And so I am representing those people. And so uh, because of that, I'm actually not representing them per se. I'm part of them. They are my people. Uh, they're not boss people, and so that's why we expect, actually, it may sound crazy and nutty, but we expect to win on June 12th. And the reason we're going to win on June 12th is because uh, the Republican Party itself has moved to the right. Bob Goodlatte has done a number of things which are uh, an affront to uh, not just liberty, but a front to even fiscal conservatism. You know, we're talking about, um, uh, you guys here talking about uh, Ken's guy, talking about Obamacare. You know, Bob uh, goes around talking about how he voted 70 times on 70 different occasions to, against Obamacare or to strip parts of Obamacare out. And yet, when it came time to fund Obamacare, you know, Bob Goodlatte voted not once, not twice, but three times to fund Obamacare. Um, Bob Goodlatte has done himself no favors with his introduction of and co-sponsoring of the SOCA legislation, Stop Online Privacy Act. Um, won himself no uh, favors and no friends in the Constitution with the Royal Liberty or anybody under age 35, and that's not a movement, that's a fact. That's, that, is, that, is, that is Americans, a good, set, a good section of Americans. Um, so he really um, doesn't embrace our value system. It's not just that he doesn't embrace mine. He doesn't embrace the value system of the Republicans and the independents, and, he, and of course the Democrats in the 6th District. So uh, we've been running this campaign now for a year. Uh, as far as what I'm running on, I'm a constitutional conservative. Uh, you guys probably know me as a Rockwell writer. I was a member of the Libertarian Party for years. I uh, grew up Republican, became Libertarian in 1995. Joined back into the Republican Party last year in order to unseat Bob Goodlatte in his primary. And I'm modeling that. For a long time, I wouldn't join the Republican Party because, quite frankly, they don't follow their own creed, and everybody knows it. So I had no intention of, of, uh, of doing that. I had no interest in doing that. But I kind of followed and learned from the Ron Paul and the Rand Paul practices. And, um, and I think maybe I saw that within this party that talks about conservatism, there was some hope that they would actually embrace limited government, republicanism, and conservatism. And I think they're doing it. Um, so decided to run, join, rejoin the Republican Party, uh, and, and challenge Bob. He never took the challenge seriously. Of course, he's never been primary. About two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago to be exact, we had a 6th District uh, Republican convention, and it was absolutely um, four of the five people there were Ron Paul, either Ron Paul, constitutional conservative, um, or just hardcore fiscal conservatives. They booed Bob Goodlatte, they cheered me, and I got a standing ovation. Now, they're not cheering me, Karen Kutowski, who's never run for anything before. They don't care about that. What they care about is what I am saying to them resonates in their hearts and resonates in their minds. It is intellectually honest, it is logical, it is what we became Republicans for. So they like that. They respond well to that. If we get a, 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 nor, a decision by the RPB, which, which, was, which may happen, um, the establishment will be gone. It will disappear overnight um, because it will not win these primaries. It will not win these conventions. And if we had chosen our representative, the 6th District had decided who the Republican nominee will be, and in our district, which is 70% Republican, that means who your next congressman will be. If we had done it through that May 5th uh, convention, I would be standing here as the nominee, the Republican nominee. Now, what am I fighting for as that Republican nominee that I fully expect to be? Even though it's a primary, we, we think we've got the ducks lined up. But in any case, what I'm advocating, and this is where I'm not going to waste a lot of time, if anybody's heard of downsizedc.org, Jim Babs, or, or not Jim Babs, Jim Babkin's organization, if they know what's there, I have adopted as a centerpiece of what I talk about to all the people I talk to, whether it's Republicans, Independents, Democrats, read the bills, write the laws, one subject at a time. So when people ask questions, you guys, there's not going to be time for questions, we've gone so long, but you guys ask great questions about the position on the Patriot Act. I got a simple question. I mean, I could, I could wax eloquent, but I don't need to. Did they read the bill? No. Invalid. Needs to be repealed. Obamacare. We know for a fact they didn't read Obamacare. Pelosi said we had to pass it in order to find out what was in it. Okay, right there. That's not how you make laws. So 
if we structurally incentivize the right kind of behavior and somehow facilitate, in simple, honest, open ways, facilitate accountability among the Congress to the people, we're going to have good government and we can get it. Now, ultimately, I mean, I'm not, I'm a little worried about the spending, but the reason that I'm here, I'm worried about the debt, I'm worried about where we're going. I mean, I'm an end the Fed guy, I'm, a, I'm an audit the Fed person, and I'll run on that. And let me tell you, Republicans love that. Buckleet was a late signatory or a late co-sponsor to audit the Fed. Wanted to hold his finger up for quite a long time before he realized maybe this was where it's going. This is where it's going. I mean, if we want to talk about structural problems and bad incentives in this country, we don't need to look no further than the Fed. We all know that. But in any case, um, I'm running on a downsized DC type platform. I want to repeal the 16th. In order to do that, I am willing, and, and I've said this publicly, I'm willing to co-sponsor the fair tax. Primarily because it, it has a direct linkage uh, to repealing the 16th. Um, I don't believe that any tax at all should be revenue neutral to today's standards. And, and somebody mentioned earlier, I think, uh, was, it, was it the Reverend uh, E.W. mentioned going back to 2008? Well, I'd like to go a lot farther back than that as far as that federal budget. But anyway, I'm pro liberty. Anybody that's read any of the things that I've written, you know, I'm, I'm going, I probably won't get the question, what do I read? Well, I'll tell you what I read. I read. Uh, I read a little Jefferson, I read a little Thomas Paine, I read a little Sanders Spooner, and I read a lot of Rothbard. So we have a big problem here um, that I see through that very hardcore small government, uh, very small government, very limited government um, framework. That, that's how I view things. And I think many people are coming to that. Um, can one or two people or 10 or 20 or 30 make a difference? Well, of course they can. If you go up to Congress, and E.W. touched on this a little bit, if you go up to Congress, and I'll tell you, this is how I'm going to handle John Boehner. One of Bob Goodlatte's problems is he's John Boehner's boy. He's worked for us in the sixth district. He works for John Boehner. John Boehner has his son. And, and John Boehner and all the speakers, they run this place the way they like to run it, right? They get their boys and they tell them what to do. They explain to them how they're going to trade their principles down and get something from John Boehner can grant to them. My, my approach, and John Boehner will approach me when I'm up there. He will approach me, not more than a couple of times. But I will reach over to John Boehner and I will pull out the Constitution and I may have to rattle around again. I hope it makes him nervous. I'm going to pull that constitution that he carries. And I'm going to say, sir, this is, this is how I'm voting. Okay? And he won't come back to me more than a couple of times. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of backbone in Congress, a little bit of articulation of these fundamental principles that all Republicans agree with, and many others do as well. A little bit of that goes a long way. Okay? It doesn't take a lot of people if there's a little bit of courage, because people want to be on the winning side. And they want to be on the courageous side. You know, Ron Paul's given us a great example over many, many years, but we are seeing a huge concentration and the, the snowballing effect of what he's done really by himself for many, many years. And now what we're seeing is lots of people want to be on the winning side, okay? People want, I mean, even Bob Goodlatte wants to, wants to talk about liberty now that he's being challenged. He doesn't know what it means. Of course, oh, by the way, the guy's not learning a darn thing. Just failed, but voted no on the AMAS show. That's what Bob Goodlatte did most recently. So he hasn't learned a thing, and he has to go. We're finding that a lot of people in our district want him gone. Uh, I prefer to have it done through a convention. It saves a lot of money. I'm cheap. Um, I don't think it makes any sense to have taxpayers fund primaries. Um, Bob liked the primary, wanted a primary, because he thought he could win it. We're here to, tell, we're here to show and demonstrate how he's not going to win it. Okay? And that's going to be one more thing in all the things that are happening across this country that will allow us to restore the republic. And that's what I care about. Um, if there's any questions that you want to ask, I'll, I'll try to answer them briefly. I don't know if we're going to time issue. Can you review your Voltaire Grand Rapids briefly? Oh, sorry. Well, that's amazing. Yes. Well, it's not that amazing. I, I, I spent, sorry, no thanks. 20 sure. years in the military, 20 years in the Air Force. I uh, got a scholarship to go to college. Didn't have any money. That's how I went to college. Um, joined the Air Force. I spent 20 years there. Palm Electronics Technology Type Officer for the first 15 years. Did a stint in acquisition, which was extremely eye-opening, as you can imagine. So when people ask me what I'm going to cut, um, you know, obviously, I know a lot. Of, my own personal background in the military uh, reveals to me many opportunities of savings, which have nothing to do with, with, with uh, not being pro-defense, because I'm very pro-defense. In any case, I did that for a little while. Then I ended up, of course, uh, in Pentagon, first working on the air staff for Africa and Middle East issues, then working uh, at the Office of Military Defense for, for uh, uh, Rumsfeld and company, uh, Doug Fife was my, was my boss, 
And we worked uh, things like uh, propaganda and lying for war. And, and of course, again, just as I had been some years before in acquisition, my eyes were open as to the process. One of the stories that I tell people as I go around um, in terms of how the laws are, you know, right the laws is a part of that downsized PC thing. I explained to those people that I worked with congressional staffers, congressional aides, military aides, liaisons, who spent their day in the, in the Senate and in the offices of the House. They spent half their day writing legislation and the other half of their day handing and hand delivering that legislation to the congressmen. And we would write what we wanted your tax dollars to do for us. Not for defense, but for us, for our, for our particular favorite programs, for our particular favorite uh, organizations, for our budget. We wrote the bureaucracies that belong in the executive side of the House, the DOD. I don't know how the EPA does it, but I can imagine they do it just like we did in the Pentagon. Okay? We wrote language, perfect language. You can just take it and sit it right over there and laws that. But that's exactly the process. So you know they say, like, oh, you don't want to see how laws are made because it's really sloppy. It's like sausage and you don't want to see it. Quite frankly, it's not that sloppy. It's not that sloppy because they go to these places. And, and I mean, talk about the lobbies and the industrial corporations and those folks who write their own legislation the exact same way. It's not that sloppy. It gets written outside of Washington or in the surrounds of Washington. Okay? And it gets very nicely printed, typed, spell checked, and formatted in the proper way with the italics in the right place and all the proper uh, you know, if, ands, and buts. And it gets handed to a congressman who, if he's one of our boys or one of our girls, takes that and stuffs it into a bill. That's how it's done. I don't really think that's that complicated. But people don't people think, oh, it's not done that way. Yeah, it is done that way. That's exactly how it's done. Well, because I know that, and my military experience, maybe it is special, because I was able to see this and, and, and grasp what that means. So yeah, it informs me. It informs me as, as a congressman, congresswoman, person for the 6th District. It informs me so that I will not be vulnerable to that kind of stupidity and that kind of really fraud. I mean, I think it's quite frankly fraud. But that's how it's done, and I, I do know that. Also, uh, this issue of wars and constitution. I, of course, like EW, like any of you that have, that have served in uh, really any government office, most of the time you swear an oath, certainly in the military, we swear an oath to uphold the constitution. We were very proud, all of us, uh, when we got promoted, when we got uh, you know a, a new rank, we would always read, take that oath. And everybody was really happy about that. We really liked that. And uh, there's a reason there are a lot of uh, uh, libertarian-minded people and fiscal conservatives and constitutionalists in the military. What happens is we swear this oath and we think everybody else believes it, and we think we believe it. And if you stay in long enough, what you find out is that's just empty words. These congressmen that walk around with these little constitutions in their, in their breast pocket, well, they don't read them, and if they read it, they don't understand it. If they understand it, they ignore it. So it's a huge, huge problem, and so we are looking for a better way. That, that better way, I'm not a, you know, I'm a constitutionalist. I don't believe that God wrote the Constitution, okay? I think people wrote the Constitution. I think they did the best they could with what they had. It's not perfect, okay? But if we want to restore the republic, I think that's our roadmap, and that's what we need to do. And I think that just sending a few more, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 more in this next election, a few more people like me, people who think like I do, people with a little background, people with some of this perspective, we get a kernel of support and power, the Republican Liberty Caucus, for example, grows a little bit, becomes a real player, we can leaven the rest of Congress. Most of those guys are scared out of their minds, and many of them are quite ignorant in what we're talking about. I mean, you guys are smart right? so I can talk about a lot of things to you guys. You understand what I'm talking about. We have the shared context. A lot of these congressmen, they don't have a clue. They really don't. And so they're vulnerable to us, and that's another thing we can take into the over here. So anyway, that's